Every country has its own unique little quirks that baffles those of us who live elsewhere. Every culture is different, and that's what makes the world exciting. There are just some other places in the world that confound you and baffle you to the point of not being able to understand them. And one of the most popular of those is the country we're showcasing today. These are 20 things you didn't know about North Korea. Number 20. North Korea's Abandoned Hotel The Rugyong Hotel in Pyongyang, North Korea, is an intriguing architectural marvel that not only seems to be a symbol of the ambition of the North Korean leadership to portray the nation as prosperous, but it's also a moldering reminder of the failure of that very ambition itself. This big old structure, also known as the Hotel of Doom, stands at a height of over a thousand feet with 105 floors, making it one of the tallest hotels in the world, except that it's not actually a functioning hotel. Construction on the hotel would begin in 1987, but it also experienced numerous setbacks, which included funding issues and technical challenges. As a result, the building stood unfinished and empty for many years, giving it the nickname of the Hotel of Doom. Its unique triangular shape added to its distinctiveness and made it a prominent landmark in the Pyongyang skyline. But while the hotel was initially intended to house hotel rooms, restaurants, and other amenities, its interior remains largely unknown to the public. In recent years, there have been reports of renovation efforts and plans to finally open the hotel to guests, although details remain scarce. So what do you reckon is going on inside this building? There are many rumors and speculations, but like most things in North Korea, nobody can say for sure about anything at all. And add to that, why does North Korea need a hotel so big anyway? Anyways, it's not like they let anybody inside. What do you think about all of this? Let's puzzle it out together in the comments section down below, shall we? Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the sweet topic. Here's one of the things you didn't know about North Korea, the women pee standing up, or at least that's what this image would have us believe. Why somebody took a photo of three women urinating, I don't know, but who am I to judge? We're sharing the image with all of you, so I guess we're just as weird. It's fascinating how different toilet culture can be around the world. Some countries have bidets while others don't, and meanwhile, Japanese toilets are technologically advanced more than some other countries. Apparently in North Korea, the women have to urinate while standing. What a wonderful world we live in. As always, let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below using the hashtag sweet topic. Number 19. Absurd Haircut Rules Totalitarian regimes are all about the government poking its nose into the lives of its citizens. However, in North Korea, they take that to the next level and even tell the North Korean people what sort of hairdo that they may have. Under the rule of Kim Jong-un, there is now a selection of hairstyles that are deemed to be acceptable, and then there are a huge array which are considered to be too capitalist. Sporting a mullet, for example? Well, that can get you in trouble for acting out and being a bit too fancy for the communist culture. I mean, if you really do want to wear your hair in a mullet, then you may have bigger problems anyways. There are apparently only 15 official hairstyles. These have all been taken from previous generations of old-fashioned haircuts. There's no spiky hairdos, no gelled looks for men, and the women are not allowed such extravagances as bobs or layered styles. Hair dye is also forbidden, as allegedly is makeup and nose and lip piercings. They're also considered to be too capitalist. Expressing yourself, that's not really a thing in North Korea, and wearing anything, including a hairstyle, that could be seen as too foreign is bordering on the criminal. Number 18. The calendar is different. 
North Korea doesn't even use the same calendar as the rest of us. Really? The North Korean calendar was created in 1997 and is the official calendar of North Korea, named after an ideology which emphasizes self-reliance and independence. It marks the beginning of a new era, denoting the year 1912 as the starting point. That would be the birth of the year of the country's founder. In this calendar, the Gregorian calendar is not completely discarded, but rather used right alongside of it. The conversion between the two calendars is achieved by adding or subtracting 1911 years. For instance, the year 2023 in the Gregorian calendar is referred to as 112 in the North Korean. This calendar also introduces its own unique holidays. The most significant, of course, is the Day of the Sun, which commemorates the founder's birthday on April 15th of every year. Other notable dates include the Day of the Shining Star, which is Kim Jong-il's birthday, and the Day of the Foundation of the Republic, celebrating the establishment of North Korea. While this calendar is officially followed in North Korea, the Gregorian calendar remains widely in use for international communication and interactions with other countries. Countries. Nevertheless, the North Korean calendar holds cultural significance and serves as a symbol of national identity. It offers a distinctive perspective on time and reflects the nation's aspirations for self-determination and autonomy. Number 17. No Blue Jeans Allowed Back in 2021, reports began to come out of North Korea that there were some new rules regarding clothing. Now, we've already heard about the haircuts that are allegedly part of the same plan by the leader of the country, and generally, it's believed that Kim Jong-un has introduced some laws to determine what people in the country may or may not wear. It's said to be an attempt by the dictator to control the spread of what he believes to be symbols of a capitalistic lifestyle. Now, one of those items of clothing that has been determined to be unacceptably Western and capitalist at the same time, in its stylings are skinny jeans. The reports say that this stuff has been published in the North Korean official newspaper, where the government has printed an article in which they state that they have to be wary of even the slightest sign of capitalist lifestyle and fight to get rid of them. This may seem like an extreme stance to take when it comes to leg wear, but then again, this regime is famously extreme, so it stands to reason. In recent years, there have been more and more fashion items in the skinny jeans department that are available to men, so perhaps this is actually a good rule after all. <laughs> I mean, have you seen just how tight those things can be? Nobody needs to see that much. Ah, oh, my eyeballs. Number 16. The World's Largest Stadium the Rangrado 1st of May Stadium, located in Pyongyang, North Korea, is an architectural marvel, and it actually holds the title of being the largest stadium in the world. Built in 1989, the colossal venue can accommodate as many as 150,000 spectators. The stadium's name refers to the International Workers' Day, in reference to the country's dedication to the labor movement. Its design is unusual, with a distinct flower petal shape and a roof that resembles a giant magnolia block. Awesome. Not limited to sports events, the stadium is a multifunctional facility that hosts a wide range of performances and mass rallies. Its grandeur and capacity make it an ideal venue for showcasing North Korean cultural and political events. That also includes the famous Ararang Mass Games. It is an important part of the propaganda and political narrative in this country, full of controversy and, well, let's be honest, severe human rights violations. The stadium's sheer size is awe-inspiring, and the atmosphere during events is a allegedly electric. Apparently, it has state-of-the-art facilities, which includes a running track, a football pitch, and multiple tiers of seating. And beyond its features, the stadium serves as a symbol of North Korea's national pride. It stands as a testament to the country's commitment to monumental achievements and their desire to create a stage for showcasing their cultural heritage. Number 15. North Korea's Basketball Rules in a country that literally makes up all of its own rules, regardless of what the rest of the world says or does, it should come as absolutely no surprise that North Korea also does sports in its very own and special way as well. Kim Jong-un is famously a massive fan of basketball, and before him, his father was also pretty into it as well. This makes for quite an awkward sort of situation when it comes to such an American sport being such a big part of the North Korean culture. And so, they've changed it up. 
Former NBA star Dennis Rodman's close relationship with North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un has led to speculation about his involvement in the creation of unique basketball rules in North Korea. According to some newspaper reports, North Korea introduced an intriguing scoring system. In this system, slam dunks hold a value of three points, while field goals made in the last three minutes of the game are worth a whopping eight points. Adding to all of that excitement, three-pointers can earn four points if the ball swishes through the net without touching the rim. However, a missed free throw? Well, that results in death due to embarrassment. No, I'm just kidding. It's a deduction of one point from the team's overall score. These unconventional rules further emphasize North Korea's desire to innovate and do their own thing, as well as adding excitement to the sometimes boring game of basketball. Number 14. World's Deepest Metro System Pyongyang's metro system reaches a depth of 360 feet and serves as both a transportation network and a potential nuclear bunker during times of conflict. The underground train system consists of two lines that span a combined length of 18 miles beneath the capital city of North Korea. Construction on this metro line began in 1968 and would be officially inaugurated in 1973 by Kim Il-sung, the grandfather of current leader Kim Jong-un. The trains themselves were acquired from Germany in 1999, and despite North Korea's later claims of having manufactured them domestically, graffiti tags from their previous origin can still be seen on the carriages. The metro stations bear names that are associated with the revolution, that includes Comrade, Red Star, Glory, Liberation, Signal Fire, Rehabilitation, Victory, Paradise, and Restoration. As commuters descend into the depths, they are then immersed in revolutionary music and patriotic songs that play all throughout the loudspeakers. While the metro is ordinarily bustling with commuters, its depth, the deepest in the world apparently, and its robust infrastructure make it a potential shelter for citizens in the event of escalated tensions and conflict or even a full-scale war with any of its enemies. Access to the subway system has traditionally been restricted to foreigners, but recently, Pyongyang has organized limited tours for foreign media. These visits are designed to demonstrate to the world the preparedness and resolve of the North Korean regime, and this is what most access to the country is about. It's always heavily staged, managed, and presented in a completely choreographed way in order to fulfill the North Korean narrative and send a message to their would-be aggressors. Number 13. No laughing, drinking, or shopping. Countries with archaic systems like monarchies have plenty of insane-sounding rules when it comes to mourning and other rituals that involve the so-called traditions of maintaining a power structure. Just look at the endless royalist shenanigans that have been going on in Britain in the 21st century. There are mourning requirements, secret anointing ceremonies, and golden carriages up the wazoo over there. I mean, are you really surprised that a country with a dictatorship and a totalitarian madness like North Korea Korea would have some banana-sounding morning schedule as well? This is the widely misrepresented commemoration of the anniversary of the death of Kim Jong-il, the father of the current leader Kim Jong-un. The required mourning period back in 2021 was 11 days. This, according to someone who apparently lives in one of the northeast cities, included not doing any leisurely activities, there was no drinking alcohol, and slightly weirdly, you were not allowed to laugh. On the day of the anniversary itself, people are also not allowed to go grocery shopping, and it's said that people are not allowed to celebrate their birthday. And if someone died during that period, it's alleged that their body had to be left there until the official national mourning was over. Those who disobeyed those rules were believed to have been arrested. Number 12. Billions Stolen in Crypto According to a blockchain analysis firm, North Korea-backed hackers would steal a staggering $1.7 billion worth of cryptocurrencies in 2022. This would mark a significant increase from the previous record of $429 million stolen in 2021 and had accounted for 44% of the total $3.8 billion stolen in crypto hacks that year. The firm had dubbed it the biggest year ever for crypto hacking. Experts believe that North Korea 
facing severe sanctions, had turned to crypto theft as a means to finance their nuclear weapons program. Despite its struggling economy, North Korea has conducted six nuclear tests, with analysts anticipating a seventh in the near future. The country also launched a record number of ballistic and other missiles in 2022. The firm would highlight the substantial impact of cryptocurrency hacking in North Korea's economy, noting that the nation's total exports in 2020 would amount to only $142 million. The hackers that are linked to North Korea will typically launder the stolen cryptocurrencies through mixers, which blend the funds from multiple users to obscure their origin. Additionally, experts say that North Korea launders the stolen crypto through brokers in China and then employs non-fungible tokens, or NFTs, for that purpose. Those things are definitely super shady, which, you know, seems obvious, really. Number 11. Traffic Ladies in the bustling intersections of Pyongyang, the capital city of North Korea, you're going to find a unique group of individuals that are known as the traffic ladies. These women, officially called traffic security officers, have become an emblematic image of the city. Selected for their looks in a society that values tradition, they play a vital role in managing the flow of traffic. Interestingly, there's a catch to being a traffic lady. If they marry, then they have to leave their position, and their time in the role is limited as mandatory retirement awaits them at the young age of just 26. This policy ensures a constant stream of photogenic young women as North Korean authorities strive to present them in the most favorable light to the outside world. Despite the country's challenging economic circumstances, while the traffic ladies are a familiar sight in Pyongyang, their male counterparts, numbering around 400, have no age restriction and are often stationed at roundabouts rather than intersections. Originally introduced in the 1980s when vehicles were scarce on the streets, the traffic ladies have adapted their role to the changing times. Even in the past, when the boulevards were wide and empty, they had directed imaginary cars with precision and energy, creating a somewhat surreal scene. These traffic ladies, with their distinctive uniforms and commanding presence, have become a regular subject for visiting tourists and journalists, mostly, one would assume, on the account that they are deliberately presented to be viewed as a positive representation of North Korea. But who knows, really? Maybe this is all just the most interesting and important thing for reporters to write about. Who could possibly say? Number 10. The Pleasure Squad the Pleasure Squad in North Korea is a controversial and secretive institution. Comprised of young women carefully selected from schools and musical academies, they are then trained to entertain and provide companionship to high-ranking officials and leaders. While officially described as cultural performers, their true roles often extend well beyond the artistic realm. Their existence highlights the peculiar blend of power, control, and indulgence within North Korea's elite circles. Veiled in secrecy, it seems it seems quite clear that this is a super shady and definitely exploitative practice, and an extremely creepy sounding occupation which, if it's like most other parts of North Korean society, is not based on free choice or even personal autonomy. Gross! Number 9. Television in North Korea if there were ever an indication that North Korea is a land that is massively inferior, then surely it's demonstrated in their television. TV is, as we all know, the most important marker of a civilization. Where would the United States be without such gems as The Bachelor, Keeping Up with the Kardashians, and The Apprentice? These are the shows that have made America into the glorious and intellectual powerhouse that it is today. Now, at least Americans are free to make garbage television and fill their heads with as much of this trash as they please, if that is indeed freedom. In North Korean television, though, it serves a powerful propaganda tool for the country's government, reflecting its ideology and promoting the cult of personality that surrounds its leaders. It operates under the control of the state and strictly adheres to government guidelines and censorship. The content of North Korean television revolves around glorifying the country's leadership, particularly that of the Kim family dynasty. The broadcasts will often feature grandiose displays of loyalty 
loyalty and obedience to the ruling regime, shows and documentaries also highlight the achievements and virtues of Kim Jong-un and his predecessors, presenting them as infallible leaders. The programming on North Korean television heavily emphasizes patriotism, socialism, and the ideology. News broadcasts will depict it as a strong and prosperous nation, while portraying foreign countries, particularly the United States and South Korea, as enemies and aggressors. Entertainment programs typically consist of traditional music and dance performances, along with some dramatic representations that reinforce the government's narratives. Western cultural influences are largely absent, and the content is tightly controlled to ensure that it aligns with state ideology. Access to foreign media is highly restricted, and North Korean citizens will primarily have access to state-controlled television channels. The viewing choices are of course limited, and censorship is pervasive, with the government aiming to maintain strict control over the information that reaches the citizens. But at least they don't have to watch endless commercials for the hemorrhoid creams and Martha Stewart talking about her Medicare coverage. They probably save those for their prison punishments, I would assume. Number 8. How the Internet Works Access to the internet in North Korea is heavily restricted due to the government's paranoia. Merely owning a computer? Well, that requires permission from local authorities, and all those personal computers have to be registered with the police. Even possessing pirated DVDs of South Korean television dramas is also illegal and can result in many years in a labor camp. Internet rules in North Korea are amongst the most stringent in the world. The government tightly controls online access in order to maintain its grip on information flow and prevent descent. Internet access is highly restricted, limited to a small portion of the population, primarily government officials and trusted individuals. Online activities are monitored and unauthorized content or accessing any kind of foreign websites is strictly prohibited. Private ownership of fax machines is banned, and sending faxes also requires high-level authorization. North Korea's internet infrastructure is isolated from the global network, creating a highly censored and monitored intranet accessible only within the country itself. These strict rules aim to maintain state control and to prevent the spread of information that may challenge the government's narrative or ideology. Ideology. Number 7. North Korea Banned K-Pop North Korea has implemented a ban on K-Pop the popular music genre from South Korea. The ban is part of the government's more broad strategy to control cultural influences and maintain ideological purity within the country. K-pop, with its catchy tunes, vibrant performances, and global popularity, has gained a significant following worldwide, especially in neighboring South Korea. However, the North Korean government perceives it as a threat to its regime, fearing that its Western-influenced style might undermine its strict control over the populace. In recent years, there have been reports of North Korean citizens being arrested and punished for even possessing or distributing K-pop. The government considers it a form of cultural invasion and views its lyrics and themes as potentially subversive. The ban on K-pop is part of a larger effort to limit exposure to foreign influence, particularly from South Korea. and. North Korea tightly controls its media, heavily censors content to ensure it aligns with the government's ideology. The ban extends to other South Korean cultural products, such as TV shows and movies, further isolating North Korean society from external influence. While the North Korean government's measures aim to maintain control, they've not completely eradicated the popularity of K-pop within the country. Illicit distribution of K-pop music and videos does still occur through underground channels, highlighting the resilience and the appeal of the genre despite the ban. The thing is though, a ban on K-pop doesn't actually sound like too terrible of an idea to me. Number 6. Daily Power Cut while most of us in the Western world would suffer palpitations at the mere thought of a power outage that might keep us from our essential business of staring at our phones all day, North Korea experiences frequent power outages due to its limited electricity supply. The country's energy infrastructure struggles to meet the demands of its population, and that results in entire streets and neighborhoods being plunged into darkness. Power shortages have had a significant impact on daily life, with activities often curtailed during blackouts. The lack of electricity 
University in North Korea has been captured visually by a NASA satellite. The image shows the country at night with minimal illumination visible. It's almost like a puzzle. You can even spot the border more clearly. The reason behind this striking effect is that North Korea's electricity supply is simply not enough to keep things shining throughout the night. Back in the 1990s, when the Soviet Union had stopped providing energy to the country, the situation got even worse. In stark contrast to their southern counterparts who enjoy a substantial power supply, North Koreans use a mere 739 kilowatt hours per person on an annual basis, while their neighbors consume over 10,000. As a result, entire streets go dark, and people will find themselves going to bed early with little to do in that darkness. Illuminated. Nothing over there. Pitch black. Well, I mean, there are a few things you can do when the power goes out. Why not put some suggestions in the comments section down below? Although most North Koreans won't have an opportunity to read your advice, what with the internet bans and lack of electricity and all. Number 5. It's difficult to escape. Leaving North Korea, well, that's an incredibly challenging and risky endeavor. The country's regime imposes strict controls on the movement of its citizens, effectively isolating them from the outside world. The government maintains a pervasive surveillance system, with informants present at all levels of society, making an escaped attempt highly perilous. North Koreans who wish to leave have to navigate a complex web of obstacles. First of all, getting a passport is difficult, requiring approval from authorities who scrutinize applicants' backgrounds meticulously. And then, if you do actually manage to obtain a passport, exit visas, which are necessary to leave the country, are also exceptionally hard to get a hold of. The government will often deny these visas, citing reasons such as the preservation of ideological purity or loyalty to the regime. Physical barriers pose further challenges. The country's borders are heavily fortified, guarded by security forces that are instructed to prevent unauthorized crossings. Now, crossing into the neighboring China, which is a common route for a escape comes with its own set of risks, as North Korean defectors will face the constant threat of arrest and repatriation by Chinese authorities. In fact, the consequences of attempting to leave North Korea can be quite severe, not only for the individual, but also for their family members who are left behind. The regime punishes defectors and their relatives through imprisonment, forced labor, and even execution. Number 4. Religion in North Korea as a communist nation, North Korea is officially an atheist state. Religion in North Korea is heavily restricted and tightly controlled by its government, and the country's ruling ideology promotes self-reliance and devotion to the state, considering it as the ultimate authority. This will lead to the suppression of religious practices and the prominence of atheism. The government has implemented strict regulations that limit religious activities. Public worship is not allowed, and religious organizations have to operate under strict government supervision. The few places of worship that do exist are heavily monitored and tightly controlled, the state will often seek to eradicate religious beliefs, considering them to be a potential threat to its power and ideology. Officially, North Korea claims to allow freedom of religion, but in reality it also suppresses any religious expression that it deems to be subversive or even conflictive with its principles. Christianity, Buddhism, and shamanism are historically present in North Korea, but their practice has been significantly curtailed. Number 3. Tourism in North Korea Tourism to North Korea offers a unique and often surreal experience. Visitors can explore the country's capital, which showcases grand monuments, meticulously choreographed mass performances, and glimpses of daily life under a tightly controlled regime. Popular attractions will include the Tower, the Kim Il-sung Square, and the famous Grand Monument. Guided tours are mandatory, with visitors closely supervised and restricted to designated areas. The government-approved itineraries offer a limited perspective, showcasing the country's achievements while omitting certain realities. Visitors are advised to adhere to strict guidelines and show respect for the regime and its leaders. Despite those restrictions, interacting with the locals can provide some insights into the culture and lifestyle. However, it is important to remember that the interactions are carefully orchestrated and controlled. So, do you fancy a trip to this unique but totally bananas country? Will you be putting this place on your bucket list? Let's start a discussion about such ideas in the comments section down below. Number 2. North Korean Currency 
The currency of North Korea is called the North Korean won. Now, it's a fascinating currency that showcases the country's unique economic system. One interesting fact, though, is that the exchange rate for the North Korean won is not determined by any kind of market force, but is fixed by the government. I'm not gonna worry about it too much, but... Foreigners who visit North Korea usually have to use a different currency called the Foreign Exchange Certificate for their transactions. This special currency is mainly used by tourists and can only be exchanged within the country. Number 1. Three Generations of Punishment North Korea has a notorious practice known as the Three Generations of Punishment Rule. This rule will target not only the individual who commits a crime, but also their immediate family members, spanning three generations. It would be introduced in 1950 and was designed to eliminate the possibility of counter-revolutionary North Koreans having any kind of blood relatives left to avenge them, or to continue with the tradition of dissent. If someone is found guilty of a political offense or deemed to be disloyal to the regime, the punishment will extend to their children and even their grandchildren in the future. This collective punishment aims to suppress dissent by instilling fear and discouraging any form of opposition. Under that rule, individuals and their families will face imprisonment, forced labor, or even execution. The rationale behind this severe punishment is so to eradicate any kind of potential resistance by eradicating entire lines. This practice reinforces the regime's grip on power and also ensures compliance through fear. Hopefully, we haven't alerted the North Korean authorities to our interest in their country. I do feel a bit nervous now after all of that poking about. How about you? Were you intrigued by the way that North Korea goes about doing things? And do you have any strong opinions about this weird country? Go ahead and share your thoughts in the comments section down below. Also, be sure to check out the other cool things that are showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.